is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, all right, all right. There he is, locked and loaded and ready to go. How you feeling, my man? Good. Once again, the Cutter's Edge music has me ready to run through a damn wall. Uh, that that thing's awesome. Yes, it is. It's uh, <laughs> it's always it's got that rock feel, that edginess to it. You I'm, know, I, yeah, I'm ready to rush the stage every time I hear it. It it uh, once you're watching for, that for whatever reason landscaping, you know, you're just you're you're just ready to dress up your house with the. Uh, oh, I see the top of that tree coming down, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I not, almost nothing fires me up quite like the cutter's edge. Uh, yep, they can knock them awesome, down man. and they can erect them too also because they erected two big trees here. We've got, uh, we got big barks here in our, in our, <laughs> in our yard. So, you know, cutter's edge pro brings it. Just want you to know they, they bring the big lumber to your house. I don't doubt you. I do not. Doubt right, you, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, you know, you want to witness the big lumber, you come on over to the Big O's house and you'll see the big lumber placed there by uh, the folks at Cutter's Edge Pro. All right, so injuries. Uh, Too Purdy, damn many. Purdy, Too damn uh, many injuries. What a brutal week. Like, this Brock is not how the number one pickup of the week, Brock Purdy. Uh, he was fine. Um, I, I watched a fair amount of him in college. I'm obviously, I went to the University of Iowa. So we, you know, we saw Iowa State every year. Uh, he's fine. He doesn't have a big arm. Um, he didn't strike me at the collegiate level as somebody who was going to necessarily even stick in the NFL for very long. Uh, he was Mr. Irrelevant, obviously in the draft. Uh, he's, he's somebody who, you know, need, needs to release the ball earlier than most quarterbacks, right? Not a, not a ton of zip there. Um, not somebody who's going to push the ball downfield necessarily just needs to make anticipation throws. He's not. He's got a little bit of mobility, but he's nothing special in the pocket. Um, this is this is obviously not a great situation for San Francisco. They they get the win this past week, and they've got a great defense and all that. But uh, look, it's it's 2022, and you don't win a Super Bowl because you have the best defense in the league. Like at some point, I mean, you know, they ran into the Chiefs earlier this season. The Chiefs put 44 on them. Um, at some point, you're going to play somebody who's going to put up a number. And it's just not realistic to think that you're gonna you're gonna make it through a, a string of games in the postseason against good teams with uh, Brock Purdy at quarterback. It's just not gonna happen. Um, he, you know, it it was already dicey in my mind with Jimmy, um, and it's it's almost unthinkable uh, right now. Which I, I too bad because the team has just about everything. They've got, obviously they've got good coaching. They've got a great defense. They've got elite talent at all the skill spots and they just simply do not have a quarterback right now. And there's no way to get one in week 14. And, and unfortunately Jimmy has the worst luck in the world, dude, because it's just, yeah, it, it really, that was a freakish injury there, man. It was just one of those things that it, it, it can happen to anybody, but somehow or another, he has worse luck than most. Uh, he can't stay healthy ever. You yeah, know? you're putting it well too, because it's a, it's uh, honestly when things like, I mean, the NFL is just a violent game. Everybody knows yeah. that car crash on every play and whatnot. It's not as if you know you can you can call a guy injury prone, I suppose, if if it's a situation where you know it's it's one injury that lingers from one season to the next, and we're always worried about it with this guy. Like if you want to talk about oh, Julio Jones and his That's hamstrings, cool. fine, your boy. Your receiver from Chicago, a white, right? A couple years back. Oh, Kevin White, sure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, there you go. but but this is like this is different stuff with Jimmy every year. This is just a product of the fact that you're the target as the quarterback, and you're gonna get hit a ton no matter who you are, whether you're a mobile quarterback, not a mobile quarterback, they're all gonna get hit. And you know, it's a different body part every time, it seems. Yeah. It's just it's just really unfortunate because that was a you know, they were on the short list of teams in the NFC that you really thought could uh, could challenge Philadelphia. I'm with you there. You guys got questions? You want to send in your fantasy football questions? You know, the best way I see them is on the Welt and Rayom text line at 855-912-1056. That's 855-912-1056 on the Welt and Rayom text. And, of course, you can send them in here on the chat board, and I will uh, fish them out also here on the chat board. You can send them in on Twitter 
at Big O Show. That's another way that I can find them. Brian Looper is asking, should I start Kirk, Kirk Cousins against the Lions or Dak Prescott against the Texans? <laughs> well, we should all have your problems uh, in week 14 because there's six damn teams on by. And all these guys suffered injuries in uh, in week 13. And here you are dealing with a Kirk Cousins or Dak Prescott problem. Um, I, either one's going to be great. I'm probably going to have Kirk Cousins just a, just a shade above. Super close. Um, there's not a bad answer here. We're going to have both of them probably in the top six, top eight. Again, there's so many quarterbacks out this week. Um, you know, Dak is the guy who throws to CD lamb and Kirk is the guy who gets to throw to Justin Jefferson. Both of them, uh, are, are living well. Um, it, it's going to be Kirk for me in what I think can be a shootout of a game. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the tiebreaker here. Like I, I would imagine that the Houston Dallas game goes a little bit like the game we just saw from Dallas, right? Where Dak doesn't have to put up a huge yardage total. The touchdowns are there, but I think it was like 170 and three touchdowns. And obviously that game got very far out of hand in the second half. I would imagine the Houston game is going to go the same way. I think Zeke and, and Tony Pollard are both in for big days. Um, but the Lions are frisky. Like, I know they haven't won a lot of games. Um, and that's a little that, you know, maybe you think that's a little dicey. The defense is generous and whatnot, but that offense can put a number on you. Um, they've basically been, you know, a, a, a top third NFL offense all season. They got a lot of talent. They just get Jameson Williams back. Um, they've already got Amon Ross St. Brown. They've got DeAndre Swift getting healthier. Like, that is a really good team. And that game can finish like. 35 31 and it wouldn't be a huge shock so i, I think kirk is going to have to throw for four quarters and i think dak will not all right uh joey vasquez is asking kenneth walker was my rb1 pierce was my rb2 i have wilson R ricard white and samanji p ryan on my roster should i pick up james cook or mckinnon as replacements who else can keep me afloat yeah, let's just let's just hit on on a bunch of those names quickly. Um, what we know about Kenneth Walker right now is they they called it a jammed ankle. Um, they said that he it's not like a traditional ankle sprain apparently where where it got twisted to either side, but rather it's jammed. I don't know what the timeline on this is going to be. There's no obvious pickup there either. Um, it was you know DJ Dallas had a really disappointing day behind Walker on Sunday. Travis Homer had a knee issue and an illness, and he was you know he was inactive. Um, he might be the guy. Nobody's going to do what Kenneth Walker was doing. So I don't think there's an obvious pickup there. Um, Samaj P. Ryan probably is going to lose a big chunk of his value because Joe Mixon was close to making it back from concussion protocol this past week, and he's surely going to be back, you know, in the week ahead. So that's a huge, that's a huge ding for P. Ryan. Um, in, in my view, James Cook would be the priority here. And, uh, there's a couple guys on a lot of waiver wires right now who should be popular ads this week at running back. One of them, obviously Cam Akers available in over 50% of Yahoo leagues at the moment, scored a couple touchdowns, has not been a particularly explosive player this year, but, um, he just played over 70% of the snaps. And again, found the end zone twice. He'd be fun. Um, James Cook though. Uh, that was something. Uh, and, and I can't say I saw it coming because once that team traded for Naheem Hines, we thought, OK, well, the the if there's going to be a James Cook surge at some point, it's going to have to wait to a future season. Uh, but no, he's been really good, actually, since Hines joined the team. And Cook is coming off a game in which everybody was healthy in that backfield and he handled 20 touches. Uh, I think it was six catches, 105 scrimmage yards, looked great, looked the part, was on the field late. Uh, and again, it wasn't an injury situation with Devin Singletary. Actually, um, they, they basically split snaps in that game. So Cook is a real part of the plan for that team moving forward. He's not, he's not going to see 20 touches each week, but I, I think at this point you have to assume that it's going to be double digit touches, um, which, which should be enough to get you through a couple of weeks without Kenneth Walker. What about DJ Dallas? Yeah, that was messy. Um, that, uh, poor DJ Dallas had to come back into that game. He was doubtful. Like he suffered an ankle injury as well, w was called doubtful and then had to return to the game because like Tony Jones was getting mauled and, and Walker was already out. And he's just not, he's not a super explosive player. He's not a, a talent of the level of Kenneth Walker. And again, he's going to, he's going to come back next week, presumably to a backfield that also includes like Travis Homer, who was running ahead of him previously. It's just a, it's a super messy situation. Another hurricane, baby. <laughs> D 
EJ Dallas and Travis Homer. Yeah, if you get bonus oh, points for I'm Hurricanes, how about go Zonovan? For it. Is Zonovan an option? Uh, yeah, if he's available, he was uh, he was mass added a week ago, obviously because Michael Carter suffered the injury, and they the key thing there without respect to Carter's injury is that Zonovan Knight was clearly in the plans already, right? Like he was, right. he was getting touches True. before Carter got hurt a couple weeks ago. Uh, but he and they might be available in some leagues and they'd made James Robinson inactive. He's available in about 53% of Yahoo leagues right now. So if you missed the rush last week, you can, you could probably still get him this week in a lot of formats. Like if you're playing an eight, eight or a 10 team league, he, he might still be out there. Um, I will say, I don't like I I enjoy maybe we talked about this last week. I enjoy his rushing style. I kind of just stylistically, I like guys who pick out a defender and decide they're going to run through them. Um, but he's not like a super elusive character. I, I would say well, he that's roughly why he's get, doing that. That's why. He's, yeah. He's oh, yeah. 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 I mean, he gets he can't run around you. <laughs> he gets what's blocked and and then he picks right. up a couple of yards when he decides to lower his head and go through somebody. That's why they nicknamed him Bam at the collegiate level. Right. Like he's he's fun. Um, I don't know that he's substantially better than like what we would be getting from James Robinson, but he's clearly running ahead of James Robinson right now. And the Jets are clearly a run committed team. So, yeah. He's he's definitely out there and available in a lot of leagues and should be scooped up. All right. Jason Meyer says, Big O, I have a ton of buys next week. Need a flex option. Corey Davis at Buffalo out. DJ Chark versus Minnesota next week. Any other guys you recommend? Um, if available, I'm pretty interested in Nico Collins. Uh, and this has nothing. His quarterback situation is bad, right? Like he'd be a former Michigan guy, plays for the Houston Texans now. Um, Kyle Allen is, is a bit of a train wreck of a quarterback. They don't really have any good quarterback options. Who knows what they'll, well, what they'll do, uh, moving forward. You, They're obviously, what about, well, you talked about it. What about Jamison Williams? You talked about the lions. Yeah. Um, he's fun. He just, he didn't see a target and he barely played. Um, so I don't, I don't know what their plan is for Jamison Williams. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. It looks like you're starting. It looks like that's a guy you're starting to you. Yeah. You're right. If you need production this week, no, I mean, it sounds like this is a bi-week coverage issue, right? So like if, if I were stashing yeah. a guy for the end of the right. season, would I take a flyer on Jamison Williams? Sure. He's got, he's got Chicago in week 17, but if we're trying to cover week 14, I want somebody that I know is going to get volume. And I know that's Nico Collins. And honestly, if we're just talking about physical attributes, Collins has him. He's six, four, he's got yeah. four, four speed. He's got yes. leaping ability. He should have been a better collegiate player. A little bit of that was the, uh, you know, quarterback play at Michigan at the time. Um, but he's a great athlete. And all of a sudden he's, he's drawing nine, 10 targets a game. They're not great targets. They're Kyle Allen targets, but he did find the end zone this past week. And at that sort of volume, I, th I think he's probably one of the most interesting names out there. It is a, all it right. is a rough, it is a rough week on waivers at wide receiver. I'll say that. I got one for you. Waddle has got a little ankle injury. Trent Sherfield. I can't have it. I can't. I can't have. I can't have Jalen Waddle uh, injured right now. Listen, Big O. Uh, I I need. No, I need no, us but I'm to... just giving you. I don't want Jalen Waddle, dude. I'm a Dolphins fan. I don't. Yeah. Want I I need us. I need us to manifest kind of a, a healthy Jalen Waddle. He might yeah. be a little bit more of a decoy this week. Trent Sherfield has proven to be very reliable yeah. all year long. And I'm just saying, this is going to be a shootout on Sunday night. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, Sherfield's a fun player. Uh, you saw it early in the early in the Dolphins game this past week, and he's he's flashed a, a number of times this season. I'd, I'd probably lean Collins there because the volume is clearly going to go his way, but Sherfield is plenty good. Okay. Oh uh, man, John, I bet I bet you're looking forward to a to a Herbert to a clash, aren't you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can't wait for Herbert to lose again. Uh Jahan Dotson <laughs> is another option right now. Headed into a bye team. is the problem. He's one of the oh, million players headed into a bye week. Um yes. but he did he obviously did flash this last week, saw a bunch of targets, um, found his way to the end zone again. That was exciting. Um, there's just a handful of guys who kind of popped uh this past week who are headed into buys because I mean, like what a what what a miserable situation the NFL has put some of these teams in. Like wait, waiting until week fourteen for a buy. Like I, you know, if you're a playoff team, I guess that's great. But but some of these teams really could have used the buy like six weeks ago, you know, and they're already yeah. out of playoff contention. And I don't even know what we're doing here. Like this to me is too late in the season for the bye weeks to hit. Yep, I'm with you there. All right, uh, Renee Diaz says. Oh wait a minute, it looks like this was a two parter. 
Should I start next week D Hop or Wilson, or should I sit Gabe Davis for Wilson? My receivers are Davis, Waddle, D Hop, and Pickens. Wilson's on my bench. Wondering who should I replace? Uh, yeah, I, listen, I, I think if, the, if we're talking about Garrett Wilson here and we're not talking about a flex with Jeff Wilson or something like that, like, please, people, specify your Wilsons, your yes. Williamses, your yeah, Joneses, your, <laughs> your Pierces. Yeah. I, and and um, by the way, if you're going to put at least Wilson, put Wilson Jr. So at least we know it's Will, Jeff Wilson. All right. Yes, right. Um, but I, I would have a difficult time, even, even in a, you know, dicey matchup against Buffalo, I would really have a difficult time benching Garrett Wilson right now. He's a, that guy's a technician. Like, this has been plenty impressive. When he's, when he's with any any other quarterback than Zach Wilson, um, he's delivered this year. Uh, well over 100 yards this past week. He was, man, he was filling out retirement papers for Patrick Peterson, I thought. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, guy's, that guy's really good. Uh, so I would have a very difficult time sitting him. I'm going to have him ahead of Gabe Davis in the ranks. And I think people know what they're getting with Gabe Davis, right? It's either a big spike week and he finds the end zone on a long touchdown or it's a really quiet week where you get four catches for like 39 yards, right? Um, I don't think there's the same variability with Garrett Wilson, especially um, when Mike White is a quarterback. All right. Um, by the way, for the uh, I can answer this. Joey, should I start Lawrence or Herbert? Lawrence got injured, bro. You're starting Herbert. I'm not sure. If yeah, really Lawrence, I, it's amazing that Lawrence came back in that game. Yeah. Um, because that that did look like it was going to be a pretty nasty injury. Eventually, he gave way at the end of the game when it was a lost cause. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, Lawrence is going to be available to play in the in the week ahead. Yeah, but you I don't be play surprised. him over Herbert. You don't. No, I would. I Herbert. certainly wouldn't play him over Herbert. Not not while not while we have a healthy Keenan Allen. You know, they're yeah. they're kind of humming a little bit, and that's going to be a shootout of a game. Yeah. No, definitely. I'm I'm with you there. Uh, Big D is asking Herbert or Geno Smith. Now that is a good question. Yeah, Gino's got, um, you know, whatever else you think about the Panthers this season, that defense has been pretty frisky. Like that defense is, I, I want to say that the Panthers defense hasn't allowed more than like 15 points in in any of their last three games. Um, so it could be sort of sneakily a low scoring game. Um, so I I would tend to, I would, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and bench Gino there. He's been wonderful. He's been like multiple touchdowns every week. I don't have a bad thing to say about Gino. It's, it's just an absolutely fantastic season. Um, but I, I'd probably bench him here, given your alternative. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, are Garrett Wilson and Christian Watson must starts moving forward? I would yeah. say so, but. You go ahead and Yeah, answer. pretty much. Again, the stupid Packers are another team that has a bye week this week. The bye, like week 14 buys. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Um, but Watson, like the I, to me, some of the most impressive stuff with Watson is this is what you just saw this past week, where he just outraces every defender to the end zone on what looks like it should be a routine play that goes for like 10 yards. And he had the same darn thing like the week before on that pass from Jordan Love, which should have been nothing, should have gone for like 12 yards. But the, the guy is like freaky fast, uh, outrageously strong. And like, he's gonna, he's gonna find the end zone on some plays where it just doesn't seem like he should. And then he's also become the guy that Aaron Rodgers will just lob it up to and be like, you know, screw it. Um, well, Christian Watson is down there <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to look for him. Um, so that's been good as well. Like I, any given week against any given opponent, it should not be a surprise if Watson finds the end zone a couple times. And then again, Wilson has just been as, as good a technician as we've seen in this rookie class. Uh, Jason Myers is asking, uh, which defense should I pick up for the playoffs? Well, I can already tell you, you don't pick up Miami's, but let me, let's keep, continue. KC, Miami, Minnesota, Tampa, Seattle, or Carolina. Yeah, um, I, I think I would try to, you know, I would try to pick on Houston as much as possible. I would just try to pick on uh, uh, schedules. I don't have every team's schedule in front of me. It, you know, I, I wouldn't, I it wouldn't be Minnesota for me. I will, I will say that. Um, uh, Minnesota has been one of those weird defenses that has been very opportunistic. They've been good at taking the ball away. They give up a million yards um, and, you know, they face good teams and they can get lit up in a hurry. So it probably wouldn't be Minnesota for me. I'm a little bit interested in Carolina because they're able to muck up a whole bunch of games. And that, you know, again, that defense has been really good lately. Uh, just uh, Brian, um, I've seen your question twice. It's just a it's a silly question, my brother. He's asking, should he start Waddle or Wilson Jr.? Brother, I would start Waddle over Wilson Jr. if he was on one leg. 
if we <laughs> amputated his leg this week, I'd still start Waddle. Okay, I mean that's not really a question. You're really uh, that's a joke, Man, right? I, I need I need I need Waddle to be healthy. I ca I got so much Jalen Waddle. Um, this was a bloodbath of a week for me because uh, it was a it was a quiet one for Waddle. Oh, he'll be I back. Oh, I mean, everybody will be back next week. Two will be on, but Waddle is a little banged up, and so I'm just and Trent has been very good as that third guy that you can yeah, really put yeah. on. He knows the offense really well. I'm just saying, if you got all these injuries, all these buys this week, you need a flex guy. I think Trent Shurfield, in, in a game that I think is going to be high scoring between the Dolphins and the Chargers, I think Shurfield is a good flex player this week. This is this is definitely going to be his highest rank of the season. I don't know if he's going to crack the top 40 for a lot of people, but he's certainly going to be, you know, he's going to be in kind of that wide receiver four range, which has just yeah, not yeah. happened all year. Yeah, no doubt. All right, what else you got going on on Yahoo so folks can check you out, my friend? Yeah, about to record the Waiver Wire podcast uh, on the Yahoo Fantasy Football forecast, so check that out this week. And uh, I'm going to have a big pickups column on Tuesday at Yahoo Fantasy. All right, there he is. And make sure you follow him on Twitter at Andy Barons and check out all the work there at Yahoo Fantasy, always doing great work. And twice a week here, Andy on Mondays, Scott on Fridays, with our Sports Grill Fantasy Football Zone. Andy, as always, thank you, my brother. We'll catch up next week. Thanks, Big O. Always a pleasure. Got it. Thank you, sir. That is Andy Barons and our Sports Grill Fantasy Football Zone. You this is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.